Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that for revelation knowledge flowing freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Father, today transform every world changer. May we will never be the same again. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Everybody that's here under this dome roof and everybody that's streaming in, you will never be the same again. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, now come on, praise the Lord like you know him. have often shared with my men and women of God that the pulpit is my place of uh, solitude. And I, I've never uh, shared like on, I'm getting ready to share now. I don't know if I'll make it through without crying. I've already cried all morning. I pulled up in the parking lot crying this morning. Bless Burns' heart. He probably didn't know what was happening. My wife, she said, you going to be to handle this? I said, I don't know. I've never seen what I saw. I've never heard what I heard. And I get to share it with world changes. Now, I just love to do three, four cartwheels and drain brown split. <laughs> Hit the hammer organ and just let her rip. But I've never seen what I saw. And so, prepare your ears, dismiss your religion, put the selfishness about yourself to sleep, and hear ye the word of the Lord. Are you ready? Yes. Now listen, here's what I want you to do. Everybody go through something. You ain't never going to be the only one. My God. But what you're going to sense in this place and over the stream is the answer for the rest of the time. It's not what you know about him, but this morning you will carry his presence. And some of you who walked into this place needing a touch from God, he will touch you as you sit and hear. And surely you will know what we missed and what we got to come out of. No more church plan. It's got to be about him. I told you, Three, four weeks ago, something's coming. I didn't know that a lot of it was going to be coming to me. But I know what it is now. And now I know why God called us 
world changes. Amen. Now, if you'll sit with me and dismiss your religion and uh, ain't nothing wrong with me, but I don't know how many times I'm gonna cry. Some of you have gone through hell. And I was going through it right with you. I just couldn't tell nobody at the time what I was going through and what I was seeing and what I saw. Oh, but we owe the devil a good old fashioned. Yes. If you can handle it, you can stay. If not, if you run out, I don't mind. If I bought a demon here, I'd run out of here as quick as I could, too. <laughs> but I want you to turn to at least three people and tell them everything's all right. <coughs> you can be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. What's happened to the church? In fact, what is it now? I thought about this new health food that came out years ago called Asahi Berry. And when I first tried it, it was sweet and tasty, had bananas in it. I thought it was the greatest thing to hit the planet. Until I decided I wanted to make it myself and I went and got the raw form. It was frozen. When I tasted it, it didn't taste nothing like what I had. It was bitter. It had no sweetness to it. It had no sugar in it. I tasted it before all the add-ons were put to it. And God said to me, that's what happened to the church. He said, there have been so much add-ons to me that people taste me with the sugar and with the honey and with the miracles and with the signs and the wonders that they don't even know how I taste. He said, my son, I want you to go and remove all the additives, and I want you to introduce the church to me and let them know if they'll take me in my raw form, when they taste me, it'll be good. Yeah. With no additives, with no sugar, just me. What has the church become? This place where we can satisfy our own desires? Is it become this place where we can show up and build our image? Has it become a place where we can take it and use it to compete with the world? What has the church become? Is it a place where we can now set up our own award shows so that we can gratify one another? What has this where has it become, and where am I in my church? And so what I'm about to show you, I'll show it to you through Scripture. We'll walk together through this, <coughs> and you've got to decide whose church you're going to be a part of. 
I don't want to be a part of that church that has to add something to God. Because if God needed to be added to, then he might not be the God I thought he was. And trust me, he doesn't need any additives. He's God all by himself. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Let's read verse 32 out loud together. Verse 32 out loud together. Ready? Read. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong. And, the do, and they will do exploits. The people that do know their God, look at verse 32 in the New Living Translation. The people that do know their God. My apologies that I don't have any makeup on and then come out and look flawless, but I found that God didn't require that of me. Apologize I didn't come in with the right hoop and the holler to get you going. But this ain't about you. Are you listening to me? Verse 32 says, he will flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will be strong and will resist him. We're talking about the people that know their God. Another translation says, and, and the people that know their God, you will know they know their God because they're going to be strong and they're going to have the ability to resist. The people that know their God will be strong. See, you don't know if you know God until you don't went through something to let you see if you're strong. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You got Christians and people in church talking about how they know God. They don't know him. They know about him, but those that know their God, you don't know your God. You don't know your God, and you don't know if you strong until you opened the cabinet up and thought you had food, but wasn't nothing in there. The people that know their God, they know how to resist whatever the devil comes at them with. People that know their God in the middle of the hurt and the pain somehow found the strength to be able to go to the other side. The, the people that know their God thought they had two more days before they cut to power, but the power was not on no more, and yet they were able to still go through it. The people that know their God, I, I'm not talking about some of that says, some of that says they know God because they they ain't never went through nothing, but I tell you, until you go through something with him, you don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him because you know his Greek and Hebrew name. You don't know him because you've been in church for the last, you know, 10, 20 years. You don't know him because you know five songs about him. Don't, don't confuse knowing about God with getting to know him. You don't really know somebody until you don't went something, you don't went through something with them. When you don't went through some pain, you know God. When, when you went a ditch and you got out, didn't know how you got out, didn't see no ladder nowhere, you know your God. When, when you open the cabinet up and didn't see no food and still didn't know where no food was going from, come from, but everything turned out to be all right, then you know your God. When, 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 when all hell broke loose and the faith people tell something that something was wrong with you because you went through something, but I'm telling you something wrong with them because they're going around declaring that they know somebody they've not yet met yet. I know him. And I know him better today than I've ever known him before in my life. I knew him when I was going through meningitis. 
I knew him when I was going through cancer. I knew him when millions of dollars were due in ministry and I had no idea where it was going to come from, but maybe it wasn't a gigantic boom, but when you know God, everything just seems to turn out all right. And I prophesy to those of you right in the middle of a hell that don't nobody know about but you and God, everything is going to turn out all right. Everything going to turn out all right. Somebody said, well, what do I get out of all of everything? All this hell I've been going through, all this hurt I've been going through, all the pain I've been going through. Some of you are so broken, there's nothing else left to be broken. And yet, when you come out of this, you come out and say, I know my God. Somebody said, how do you know your God? He says, I've been in a place with him where I was strong, and I didn't even know where that strength was coming from. Somebody says, how you know your God? He says, I was in a position where I had to withstand and withdraw and, with, and withstand against what I, I didn't even know I could stand up against stuff like that. But, but after a week later, two weeks later, a month later, I found myself that, that, that after it was all over with, I was still standing. I thought I'd be dead and gone, but I, I'm still here. I know my God. Not you know him because you wear a T-shirt. Not you know him because you've been saved for a minute or two. I know people who've been saved for 30 years and they still don't know God. They that know their God shall be strong. Do you have a witness where you were strong? when you didn't even know the strength was there. Don't talk to me about knowing God. Don't come talking to me about you know a God, and you know God because you ain't never walked in lack, and you ain't never been in pain, and you ain't never been hurt, and you ain't never been betrayed, and you ain't never been about to die. Don't, 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 talk, don't tell me you don't know God because you've never been through something. Everybody I read about in the Bible that know their God. I know three Hebrew boys that walked through a fiery furnace. They knew their God. I knew a man that woke up surrounded by a bunch of hungry lions. He knew his God. And I know a few world changers around here that have went through hell and have come out. I'm telling you, you know your God. And you have a pastor that knows his God. I know God. What are you searching for? Something you couldn't achieve in the world, and so you're trying to use God to try to get something that you were too pitiful and weak to try to get in the world. When are you just going to be satisfied with just Jesus? How much longer are you going to, going to keep adding to him? How come he's not enough right now? Because you ain't never been through nothing. Because when you start going through something and you found out that what you thought was enough wasn't really enough, and then when it was over with and he brought you out, you know your God. They that know their Lord, their God, they're going to be strong. They're going to be able to resist. 
They're not going to just roll over and give up and cave in and quit and not come to church no more because they don't know why God didn't let them get their job. And I don't know why God didn't give me no promotion. And why didn't God keep my marriage together? And, and why didn't God? You don't know your God. You know about a religious image that people have tried to use to draw you to a God where there was an additive of sugar and honey. You know about a, 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 a God, a, a, an I say he God, that they added a bunch of stuff to to make the taste taste a little better. I'm talking about a God that while you're going through and you're talking to him, you don't know where you're at. I'm talking about a God while you're going through and you're trying to figure out what did I do and he, he don't say nothing to you. I'm talking about a God that'll sit there and wait till you go through all the hell and then when you come out say, now nah, let me explain to you what has happened. I will not be afraid. And those of you who have walked in fear, I command that fear to free you, loose you, let you go right now. Know your God and fear not. They that know their Lord, their God, they're going to do, they're going to do exploits, the Bible says now. This is very interesting because he said the people who, who have stood strong, anybody in here have stood strong before? The people in here who have had to withstand, he said they will do exploits. And I said, Lord, what are exploits? Show me what the world sees when they hear the word exploits. They, they, see, they see feats and uh, noteworthy or extraordinary acts. And see, that's what folks working for. They, they want to perform extraordinary acts. Not that God can get the glory, but so somebody can pat them on the back and say, you anointed, you something, look at you. And you ain't nothing. And you ain't never been nothing without God. Everything you've ever done, everything you've ever accomplished, in Him you move, in Him you breathe, in Him you have your very being, and you got enough nerve to try to get God to do something through you to make you look good, and somehow you think, somehow you think you are all of that without God, and I'm here to tell you with all the love I have in my heart, you ain't nothing without God. Feeling all right, Kenneth? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But here's what it means to do exploits. They shall accomplish the humanly unaccomplishable. <laughs> See, when you do an exploit, you accomplish something that human beings are not used to seeing being accomplished by human beings. When you do exploits, he says, you obtain naturally what is unobtainable. You see, God getting ready to show out through those that know their God. You're going to start obtaining stuff that you weren't supposed to ever be able to obtain. You who came out of the ghetto. You who were born on the wrong side of the tracks. You who don't make the money that people say that you ought to make. God said, I'm going to take you because you wouldn't forget about me when you were going through, and I didn't forget about you, and now I'm getting ready to use you to obtain what you can't obtain. I'm getting ready to use you to accomplish what human beings are not supposed to be able to accomplish. Say, Lord, well, what is it going to take for you to do that? I need you to stop adding to the Hasei berry and take me just like I am. <coughs> hmm. Exploits. Why would I want to do an exploit? Why would I want to do something that's humanly unattainable? 
Why do I want to lay hands on the sick and see them well? Why do I want to speak to mountains and see those mountains moved? Have I made it about me? Or is it still about him? I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I know of these things. I have seen blind eyes opened. But I don't recall myself patting myself on the back when they open. I've seen people who are almost dead raised from the dead. And I don't remember walking out celebrating how awesome I was. God put me back and showed me visions of the place filled with people. I'm at a soccer stadium with over 100,000 people there. And I don't even know how, what did we do to make this happen. And I asked the Lord, what's behind all of those exploits? He said, me, I am. He says, it's my presence. In those days, without any explanation, you just showed up with me. And when you showed up with me, I showed up up with all the other stuff that you didn't know where it came from. I remember I'd walk into a place in the confidence of his presence and things would start happening, not because I commanded it or not because I had a clear understanding of the five things I needed to do so the lame would walk. It happened a few years ago when I went to Shreveport, Louisiana and, and a night service. And I didn't even carry a message with me. They didn't even know what I was going to talk about. But I carried him. Not a message. Not the five ways of doing the miracles. I carried him. When I walked into that sanctuary that night, I was so focused on him that I still didn't know what to preach. And I looked down and there was a woman who, I don't know if she ever walked. The best, best way I could describe it is she had spaghetti legs. She would stand up, but she had no firmness and to be able to stand. And I looked at that woman and the Lord said, she will walk now. And it wasn't because I said, walk in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it was because I came in with him. And before, and before I could leave, if I, before anything could walk out of my mouth, I looked at the woman and she starts sprinting. And I said, Lord, what, what did I have to do with that? She, he said, nothing. That's what I've been trying to bring back to your remembrance. Every time there was a miracle that took place, every time there was an unusual thing that took place, all you did was took me. And I took care of everything else. I don't, I don't think some of you understand because you're so used to trying to educate God on how he need to do stuff. And God is saying the key to these last days is my presence. Can you walk into a situation with the confidence that you walked in with me? Can you walk into a challenge with the confidence of knowing I don't even know what to do, but I got him. See, that's not enough for the church right now. They need the Greek understanding of this, and they need the Hebrew of how to do that, and they ain't got no problem with that, but there's going to come a time in everybody's life where God is not going to wait on your knowledge to try to figure out how to fix this thing. 
You're going to have to show up with the confidence that I am here with God. <coughs> I said, Lord, what happened then? Oh, to my shame. I said, what happened? I became a great teacher to be able to explain the ins and the outs and the X's and the Y's and the Z's. And then I noticed the things I used to see without any of that knowledge, I wasn't seeing no more. That people got excited and they wanted to hear the next deep preacher bring something deep into the picture. And I wasn't seeing nothing. I just entered into something that I called the ooh-ah doctrine. That when they heard it, it was ooh-ah. But nobody left healed and delivered and set free. I said, Lord, I ain't got time to be shamed. The whole world going to, coming to the end and everybody going crazy. Tell me the truth. Show me what I need to know and I'll get my whole life dedicated to bringing it. He said, son, you would walk into those places with me. Some of you remember years ago, I used to begin to teach on the anointing, how what we needed to do is we need to become fully dressed and clothed in his presence. I said, Lord, what happened? He said, somehow, son, you walked into the place with more than enough, me. But you walked in trying to get more of what you already had. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I already had enough. I had you. But see, it wasn't enough for the church folks. They wanted to know why and about why this and give me the three ways so I can prosper and, and, and show me how to get my business going like somebody else's business and show me how did you achieve what you achieved. And, and it was never enough for me to say it was his presence. And I realized it wasn't just me that all of us have been trying to get more of what we already had. What you had was enough. The presence of God was enough. Waking up in the morning not knowing how to pay your bills, but you knew you had a God right there with you it was enough. It was already enough. It was already enough. Having a house that month was paid for. You couldn't figure out the next month, but for that month you could walk in peace because it was already enough, but somehow you came to church because you tried to get some more. You sung hard because you tried to get some more. You gave a lot more because you tried to get some more. And all of a sudden Jesus was never enough. We kept trying to get more of what we already, already had. Well, I stand here today and I explain to you just for, in case you want to turn your membership in, God is all I need. God is all I want. From this day forward, I am not trying to get more than what I got. I got him. And every member that comes in church and they have a need. I don't have the four answers to how to get this, but I got him. And everybody come in and they hurt. I might not be to lay hands on you, but I have his presence. And if I can get you to yield and agree with the presence of the Lord that came in when I walked in, then that same presence on me will get on you and everything that needs to happen will happen because with Jesus,
He's all I need. He's all I'll ever need. My search ended last Thursday. I can't tell you everything right now, but it ended. I'm not searching for anything no more. I got him. He's all. <laughs> He's all I'll ever need. He is my way in, and he is my way out. He is every provision I'll ever need. He's my joy. He's my friend. He's my God that sticketh closer than any brother. My search is over. I got him. And when I show up, it may not be with fancy words, but I'll show up with a presence that no devil will be able to sustain. <laughs> when I show up, I may not show up with the answer that was happening to you physically, but I'll show up with a God who will remove every burden and destroy every yoke. I cannot be your intelligent encyclopedia. <laughs> because when I looked and realized that you thought it was all about your works, and God doesn't care anything about your works, he wants you to know him. Jesus did not die just so we can miss hell, but he died so that we can have a relationship with God. And if we're not pursuing a relationship with God, then tell me, what are we doing? If it's not about him, then tell me, who is it about? If coming to church and walking away from the fears of this lying generation, it's about him. And I'm ready. I will walk in such power and such authority. And if you come into church to see it, I don't do no shows. It'll be at the grocery store. It'll be in the street somewhere. It might be in your house on Christmas. I'm not to be summoned like I'm some type of magic act. For the same God that I carry, you have a right to know him too. Amen. They that know their God, I can't even believe I'm doing all this weeping in front of y'all, but I don't care. I got him. And when you have the only one that matters, nothing else does. So go play church some more. You can if you want to. Go and dress up real pretty. And prophesy in a accent that's not even yours. <laughs> I 
I know my God. And I want every world changer to go with me. But I'm not trying to figure out what it takes for a million people to log on the stream. I already know what it takes. Him. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. People need to see this, and they need to see that. And people need this and that, and, and they're tired of the same old thing y'all doing every Sunday. And they need some variety and stuff, and they need all of that. See, now you sound like a fool. <laughs> you sound like Mary Martha trying to tell Jesus what everybody needs. And Mary was at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus announced to all of them, she has found the needful thing. And it was in him. Maybe I might not be able to prove to you right now what I'm saying. I don't know, I ain't finished yet. But keep your eyes on me and Taffy. We're done with this church stuff. Now, if you want to know a man that died and went to hell for you, if you want to know somebody that was crucified, dead, and buried, if you want to know somebody that was raised from the dead on the third day and went to see the Father and presented his blood, and if you want to know somebody that sat down at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and said he's coming back again, I know him personally. His name is Jesus. The rock in a weary land. His name is Jesus. The shelter in the time of the storm. His name is Jesus. He's still the bomb. Hallelujah. Where does it start? Let me see if I can quickly show you now where it starts because, you know, you say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Rem, but, you know, we got to start somewhere. Okay, I'll tell you where it starts. It starts with stop trying to play church and come to church and get the Word. <laughs> and quit talking about how sleepy you were and the preacher didn't do enough cartwheels and they didn't hoop it enough and they didn't have enough drum enough for me to go and you go on search for a circus church with a few clowns walking up and down the aisle. But I'm ready to see exploits because of him. I'm ready for him to be able to do the humanly unaccomplishable and for me to begin to demonstrate and obtain the naturally unobtainable and can't wait until you ask me how is this happening and with the very simple answer that I will pull out every time it's because I carry his presence well can I oh yeah you can carry his presence I'll show you in a moment he's here well, how do you know he's here? Why well, I brought him with me today. But that's not enough. Oh, you got to show us something. Walk in the air. Why well, am I walking the air for? You want a wire act? I think the circus will be downtown in a couple of months. We got to stop it. This is a bunch of games, fables that wicked people play that don't really know the division between life and death. They've not seen the curtain between the reality and time, and then it stops. I have. And believe me, it ain't what you think it's going to be. 
You think God just going to celebrate you because you went to church and did something that was your reasonable service? No. You better divorce yourself from all that tomfoolery. The only thing that's going to matter is at the end of it all, do you know him? And I know about him. Do you know him personally for yourself? Can you walk into a situation, carry his presence, and knowing that with confidence everything's going to be all right because of not only whose I am, but who I'm with. Bernie Mac had it right. Who you with? I'm with a healer. Who you with? I'm with a savior. Who you with? I'm with a rescuer. Who you with? I'm with a financier. Who you with? I'm with the king of peace. Who you with? Hallelujah. I'm with the one who carries joy. Who you with? So you're trying to get me to show you all of that, but he got all of that. I don't need to look for what I already have in him. When you find him, your search is over. I got Jesus. Everything is all right. Somebody said, I thought it was going to be all right. No, when you have him and you know who you got, it's all right. It's all right right now. You sit here and some sit on that stream today. You, you think you know what people have gone through. You think you know what people are going through. If you could know just half of what some of these folks in here have gone through, then you take what you're going through and you'd almost be embarrassed to let people know it even bothered you. Y'all don't know what I'm going through. My girlfriend won't talk to me no more. Boy, shut up, I'll slap you with a pancake. Stop. <laughs> Some people lost loved ones and you can't hardly tell tell it because as soon as their loved one left, they had no other, no other place to be but with him. And they look back and months have gone by and they, and they don't know how is it that I have what I have. It's because they got him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Come on, lift your hands up and sense his presence. Sense his presence. His presence, you don't have to struggle for it. His presence, you don't have to work for it. Sense his presence. Dismiss yourself from your own mind and intellect, if you could, just for a moment. And just know that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I got you. Just sense his presence, just for a moment, could you just have confidence in his presence. If you're over the stream, sense his presence. Sense his presence. The same presence that wants to heal and to deliver. The same presence that wants to set you free. The same presence that wants to give you joy. The same presence that wants to give you the assurance that it all is well, it all is well. The same presence that assures you that what you left at home, he's already worked it out, same presence. The same presence. Come on, lift your hands up and 
in his presence. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Clothe us right now, Holy Spirit. Clothe us right now, Holy Spirit. Clothe us with your anointing. Clothe us with your anointing. Let every burden be removed and every yoke be destroyed because of you. Clothe us in your presence. Clothe us in your presence. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, would you please stand quickly? If you've been diagnosed with cancer, stand quickly. If you hadn't, don't do it. If you have, lift your hands up right now in the presence of God. He will heal you right now. Lift your hands up in the presence of God. Close your eyes, dismiss everything around you. And I trust the presence of God. I bring his presence to you right now. I command that cancer to die. I command it to shrivel up into your body and to die. In his presence, you are cancer-free. In his presence, you are cancer-free. Not by your might, but by his power. Let his anointing come over your body. Let his anointing come over your body. You worship him for his presence. His presence. His presence. Everything is healed in his presence. Everything is delivered in his presence. Yeah, yeah, everything's healed in his presence. I don't know what, yeah, everything. Everything's healed in his presence. You, you, you got something need to be healed? Stand up, get it. Stand up and get it. Get healed now, get healed. Stand up and get healed in his presence. Lift your hands up and, and, and touch his presence. Lift his hand at Ebola Blackness. Touch his presence right now. Is he real? Yes, he's real. He's real right now. He's real right now. If you're on that stream right now, his presence has moved through technology right now. There are miracles going on, physical, physical miracles going on. Some of you are touching it. Some of your fingers, your fingers feel like, like an electrical static occurrent. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. You, it feels like a, a static occurrent, like, it's like, like you sat on your hands for a while and you just got off of them. That's the presence of God going through your physical body right now. Yeah, His presence, his presence, his presence. Yes. With your eyes closed, see his power. With your eyes closed, sense his presence. With your eyes closed, know that it is God that is moving from the crown of your head to the soles of your very feet. It is God that is moving from the very inner parts of your belly, flowing out through your entire body now. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's his presence. has Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's your presence. I, I, I sense your presence, Lord. I sense your presence. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. All over this place, all over the stream, 
Holy Spirit, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Yeah, you go. Somebody say, what was that? That's the presence of the Lord. There you go. There you go. Go to you that. There you go. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. The guy gets you kick your bus out. My high need did the bon do 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 de 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 ga ha sha ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's that's the Holy Spirit. That la ba goodies. Belian gorian do riata ha ha. Yeah, that's, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let him do, let him do. Let him do it, let him do it, let him do it. It might be strange to church, but let him do it. Touch right now, touch right now, touch right now. Touch right now, touch right now. I, I know some of you are sensing stuff right now. That's the Holy Ghost, let him. Let him. Let him. Bah, yeah, ha. Bah, yeah, ha. Yeah, ha, sha, ka, ka. Some of you are weeping right now. I don't even know what's going on. That's the Holy Spirit. You're groaning right now in the spirit. It's his presence. That's his presence. Yeah, remove your intellect out the picture. Swim in his anointing right now. For this presence you will carry from this day forward. For this presence you will have confidence in from this day forward. For this presence shall escort you into exploits after exploits after exploits after exploits. You will carry his fire. You will carry his fire. Melaka, you will carry his fire. Yeah. Yeah, ha, ha. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Out of your belly, some of you feel a fire right in your belly. That's a that's that black fish. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ya la 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 ba ga go guria da nila ya la la ba. Out of your belly. Thank you, Lord. We carry you, Lord. We carry you, Lord. We carry you, Lord. Now, with a sincere heart, begin to thank God. We continue to receive. Now, wait, 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 wait. Don't clap your hands. You, ain't no wrong with it, but I want you to thank him out of your heart. I want you to use your mouth. I want you to thank him. I want you to be, I want you to be grateful to him. Thank the Lord. If it, you might fall on your knees and just start crying. It's all right. Just thank God. Thank God that you made it through. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. In his presence, 
there is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. We give you praise. The, the word of the Lord declares, taste and see that the Lord is good. The only thing you just experienced was a taste. The next realm is a see. And the next one is to praise him because of the goodness that you tasted and the goodness that you saw. Some of you had somebody, by some of you who had problems seeing, check it again. God has healed some eyes right now. You're, you're seeing right now with clarity right now. Betty, ah, ha, ha. Giri, ah, ya, ya, la, ba, ha, sha, ka, ka, ga, la, ba. Lumps and tumors have disappeared. Go ahead and check it out. You're trying to figure out, wait a minute, what just happened here? I'm telling you what just happened here. The presence of the Holy Spirit. He is enough. We don't need to add to him. We don't need to take from him. He is enough. You are now carriers of his presence. You're not looking for somebody to do for you what Jesus has already equipped you to do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Something's changed this morning. And it's not even the beginning of what is being prepared for you right now. Something shifted this morning, and it is shifting even now. Some of you on your way to car, be careful as you go to your car, you have yet to experience the weight of this glory. The weight of his glory. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Church as we have known it, end it today. <clears throat> well, I don't know. That ain't how I'm used to having it, you are free to depart. <laughs> what is God about to do? He's about to regain his glory in this earth. <laughs> the circus has been closed. Every demon influence, every fear that's used, every demon that's used fear to control people, hurt people, every demonic spirit that's come upon our children, every demon force that's tried to kill you. In the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ, of who I am and who I serve, devil, I rebuke you. You take your hands off God's people. You take your hands off God's people. You have no authority here.
you have no power here. I command you, in the name of Jesus, your influence is none here amongst us. We are the body of Christ. And Satan, we adjure you right now in the name of Jesus. We are not afraid of you. We will not walk in any fear from you. All is well. <laughs> I need somebody to agree with me. All is I need somebody to agree with me. Come on. I need somebody to say it again. Come on. All right, now what? This is really going to shake hell. Are you ready? I am anointed now. My God, did you get this? Did you sense that? My God. Did you sense that? Come on, say it again. I'm anointed now. Come on, say it out loud. I have burden removing. Yoke destroying. Power. I carry God's presence. Therefore, I am anointed now. Somebody better give God some praise up in this place. Man. Somebody better give God some praise up in this place. <laughs> oh, you need to shout like you believe it, man. Sound like you believe it. la <laughs> bush. begin to instruct you on how to be carriers of his, his power, his presence, and his anointing. I will begin to instruct you on how to release your confidence and faith in who he is in you. That never again when you walk, will you walk in a place comfortless. From this day forward, you will walk in a place just like the Apostle Paul did. From this day forward, you walk as men and women of the anointing. Devils tremble when you show up in the room. Woo! Glory to God. You are not normal churchgoers. You are the grace tabernacles of the kingdom. His presence no longer abides on Mount Sinai, nor does it abide in the tabernacle of a wooden golden box. His presence now abides in you. You sound like you don't believe it.
from this day forward, you will not have to yell or scream a prayer. For with a whisper, he's right here. <laughs> Some things before you can even say it, he will have already done it. He abides in you. He abides in earthen vessels. You are his abiding place. For every man or woman or boy and girl that will believe what I just said, everything has changed. Why world changers? Because we're getting ready to change the world. Not with perfect articulation and speech of men. If we need so, the Holy Ghost will give it to us. But you walk out of here today with no needs. You didn't hear what I said. Yeah, 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 I said, you walk out of here today with no needs. Because everything you need is in him. Everything you desire is in him. Now walk in the confidence of it. Don't open your mouth and grieve the one that you carry. Your mouth will contradict your spirit until it lines up with, you, with what you know you have in you. Somebody said, what are you talking about? You're going to say stuff and you carry the Holy Ghost and he will immediately rebel against it. What is he doing? He's working on lining you up with his presence. you <laughs> You walk out of here today with no needs. Yeah. Well, what do you do now? Is you walk out of here and you say, it is so. In other words, the first thing I'm not mean you walk out of here, the first thing you do is announce, oh God, I got a need. The first thing you do when you walk out of here is you get an agreement with what happened today. I have everything I need because I have his presence. And you know what? It might look like it get a little worse. And you say, I have everything that I need yeah, because I have his presence. And you will say that until you can say it in two or three languages to let every devil in hell know. I have everything that I need because I have his presence. Now, I only finished, I, only, I was only able to preach one scripture today. I'm on a war path now. And I will not stop until you know what I have just said to you is the truth. Now walk in it. No more fear, no more shame. Yeah, but pastor, I just moved in with my girlfriend. Go, go move out. 
It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna feel right anyway. Whatever felt good last night, it's all messed up. Today it messed it all up right now. It ain't gonna feel good at all. It ain't feeling good at all. Because when you start carrying his presence, some of y'all look younger. Y'all think I'm playing with you? There's an aura that has come over this congregation. Now, I know I got gray on my face, but it's a, it's a, it's a young-looking gray. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, hey. You don't have no idea, and I can't wait to tell you. I ain't never going to be the same. Neither will you. I don't know what to do now, <laughs> except how great thou art. How great thou art. Now, Wednesday, I don't know where, I don't even know. I'll just, I'll just wait and be quiet till I can figure out where, I'm, where I am and where I'm going. Somebody say, Pastor, what about the Falcon the gate? The Falcon can hold a stick to this present. A lot of things are in change. Everything in change with me. Everything in change with me. I, I enjoy football, but not as much as I enjoy his presence. Certain things can't do you like Jesus. I ain't got enough time. If I did, I'd cry again. Because he's so good. He's so good. And pray for my precious, precious darling, my precious anointed darling wife who just refused to let me go. Just refused. She's just the, she the sweetest thing in the world. She the sweetest thing in the world. But she kept saying, devil, it's payback time. Oh, come and go with us. Watch this, to my father's house. Somebody said, where that at? I, I, I already told you. In his presence. Come go with me to my father's house. This is coming to a close. But before the rapture comes, I, 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 I I saw a revelation of grace hit the earth like never before. I carry that revelation. You wait till you see what's coming out of me. But right after that revelation was dispensed, the rapture of the church took place. Now, many people talk about the war of Ezekiel 38. There's a move of God that has already begun on this planet. Satan rejoiced because he thought he shut the church down and it's closed. And today all of hell and every demon, I thought I told you how to kill him. What are you doing there? Well, greater is he that is in me <laughs> than he that is in the world. Oh. 
But this time I'm smart enough to know it ain't going to be no one man or woman. All of you who carry his fire. Now get ready now. The move of God I'm talking about now, you not going to see somebody say, we're going to see a lot of it when we come to church. Oh, I don't know who house you're going to today. Oh, I don't know where y'all going tomorrow. Tomorrow. I don't know where you're going to end up by the end of Tuesday. But somebody's about to encounter the Christ in you. Now watch this. You're not going to have to do nothing to make nothing happen. Please get this, son. Just get this now. Don't walk out of here thinking about what you got to do to make it happen. So I said, well, what we do? you just going to show up with him. If you just show up wherever he tells you to show up, you watch what God will do. You won't will you by bishop. You will not take credit for what you are about to see. The next several weeks here at World Changers will be like we going into a cloud and coming out of cloud. Like you walk into a cloud and coming out of cloud. Everything will be impacted. The music won't be the same. It'll just be like what is happening. Those of you who are married, those of you who are recently married, those of you who are getting ready to get married. <laughs> see that? See, that's the anointing at all. See, that's the anointing. See? Before she wouldn't have said nothing. Now, that's the anointing right now. She. <laughs> I felt that thing too, boy. She could keep, she keep hollering like that. Somebody that's going to holler back at her. <laughs> it's not going to be the same. You ever heard people always talking about all what, what, what one of us got to happen? You know, it's real simple. None of you and all of him, that's what's got to happen. What are you talking about? We got to get out of, we got to get out of God's way. Get out of his way. He never needed you to do him. He never needed you to be who he is. Hallelujah. I ain't the same. I ain't never going to be the same. As long as I live, I ain't never going to be the same. You think you can predict what's going to happen when I show up? I don't know what's going to happen when I show up in your presence. Don't, 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 don't presume upon yourself to, pre to know what I'm going to do when I bring his presence into, into your presence and you bring his presence into his presence. You don't know what's going to You don't know what's going to happen. But I ain't going to get in his way. Everything is all right. Something good is going to happen to you today. Somebody said it already has. Yeah, I'll say that, Lord. Well, 92? Those of you who have entered into your 70s, your 80s, and your 90s, I just heard the Spirit of God say, I am going to release an anointing that this earth hadn't seen before through those who have entered into their 70s, their 80s, and their 90s. <laughs> you thought they couldn't do nothing because they was older, but God said, I ain't need them to do nothing. They need them to get out of my way and take me where I need to go.
I felt that. That's an anointing that is pouring out on the earth right now in the name of Jesus. And the younger people may look younger on the outside, but God is going to put the spirit of the rock of ages on the inside of them. And when they talk, they'll be talking like people, men of many years of wisdom. And their mamas and daddies will wonder what happened. And the whole time, God just wanted you to know, get out of my way. Now, I'll say this one thing, and I believe I'm done. If not, I keep talking. If you got to go, go. The Lord will not rapture up a defeated church. There will be and has already begun a move. Every demon of the devil thought he had in grips the younger generation, but it is now being turned around on him. For that generation that he thought he would possess sweatlessly will be the one that will bring the final blow to his darkness. And I won't take it back. Pastor, what is happening? <laughs> I got out of his way. And he is precious to me. And as a man, I'll never, ever again be afraid to share it, my tears for someone who I love. So, if you had a visitor you bought today because you wanted to meet your man of God, and they happen to run into a weeping prophet. There's more where that came from. <laughs> well, Pastor, you all right? Well, like when you fight hell, you, a little, you get a little wore out. I've been just fighting hell, and all is well. <laughs> All is well. I just wanted to show up today to give hell a piece of hell. <laughs> now, where do we go from here? Think about what I just asked. That's been our problem. He puts us in the right place, only for us to leave and end up in the wrong place. This is not about you. There's nothing required of you except your yieldedness and your faith. Finally, let him do. Let him do the work. Let's pick up from this right place. Let's not come in with a thousand revelations on what God said to you. I don't want to hear that. You don't want to need to hear it. <laughs> come back with, just a, with such a hunger for him that where you were ashamed to dance, the dancing in your feet has returned. where you were ashamed to lift your hands up, you couldn't hardly put it down. 
praise him all day today. Praise him tomorrow. Praise him on your way to work and on your way back home. Forgive. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to shut up. And I know I probably didn't say that a several a couple of times. How do I know that what all has happened today is authentic? It's going to be based on how we treat one another. You can't be talking about you carry his presence and hurt God's people and hurt folks. Okay? You forgive even if they don't forgive you. You don't, you don't treat people mean and hurtful. This is coming to an end very quickly. God don't ever need a whole bunch of folks. He just need a few of you, of you folks that have decided today. I don't want to go into, I want to see this whole thing collapse and come to an end. I want to fly and say, if you want to get out of there, you better grab my hands. If not, you're going to hell. They're going to leap as high as they ever leap before in their life. It's coming. It's coming. But the battle has already been won. All right. Let's go ahead and worship God with our offerings. Uh, well, dear God, you've been given. I don't know for long. You know how to do it. You see what's on the screen, those of you at home, you get to give that way. If you're giving on the screen now, now if you're online at home and you were not, not able to make it here, you call every world changer and you tell them you need to hit this thing before the day over with. Call in all world changers and you get a hold of this. You get a hold of it. That same anointing will be on these services all day today. If you go back and look at what you experienced a few minutes ago, that same anointing will be there. That's something awesome about that anointing. If you're giving over the uh, stream, you want to text world changes the amount to 74483. You can call that number on your screen. You can mail. Or you can go to the website, worldchanges.org, creflodollarministries.org, and praise him with your offerings. Praise him with your gifts. Do not separate your giving from your relationship with him. He didn't, and he's not. Neither will we. Amen. If you need an offering envelope and you're here, if you lift your hands up, the ushers will put an offering envelope in your hands. I tell you what, you world changers, y'all just keep coming to church for you know we're going we're gonna to be back just like where we were. Y'all just, y'all won't go away, will you? You just keep showing up, just keep showing up, just keep showing up. Don't you thank God for Pastor Ken? Thank God for Pastor Ken. Oh, my God, thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, the preaching. Oh, the preaching, what he preached last week, so ministered to my soul. That you don't have to beg God for faith that he's already given to you. So he gifted you with the faith you need. What you talking about? You ain't got no faith. He gifted you with it. Amen. I'm stirred up. Seriously, do I do? I, I want to go down the street and find a couple of demon-possessed people and kick the devil out of them. God is good. All right.
Those of you on the stream, there's a QR code up there if you want to put the QR code and then you can give that way. Some of you on your way out, you ain't ready to be hugged yet. And that's fine. And if they don't want to be hugged, quit trying to hug somebody that don't want you to hug them. <laughs> well, that ain't the Holy Ghost. They ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. They got something to do with they don't want you to hug them yet. I've been vaccinated. They still don't want you to hug them. Get away. I don't want you hugging me. Some of you, I ain't want you hugging me before you got vaccinated. Just, <laughs> just don't hug nobody. Stop. If they don't want to be hugged, they don't want to be hugged. If you see their hand go up like that, back up. Hold up. Church folks are always trying to make something happen and then put a scripture with it. Stop. All right, you're going to get some of these carriers of his presence cussing you out if you keep trying to go up there and hugging them, leaving them alone. They're trying to, they're trying to act right. They don't want to have conflict with the Holy Ghost every day. Look at some of y'all looking at me funny. Well, whoa, whoa. They don't want to be hugged. They don't want to be hugged. Well, I'm going to hug them anyway. All right, I tried to warn you. Some of these folks ain't that saved yet. They're working on it. Probably most, of, most folks got saved today. I love y'all so much. I love you so much. I love you with all my heart. I love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. All right, go ahead and receive the offering. Ushers and mash whatever button need to be button. I don't know what I missed, but you, you know how to give. Trying to act like, well, I don't know, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah, you do. You know how to give. Just, just give. Man, these world changes, they keep logging on, they, they, won't, they won't, they keep streaming in, they keep coming to the dome, they show up on Bible study. A uh, world, what's a world? Uh, after a while, people are going to ask, what's a world changer? I'm like, one of them. You can't, you can't get rid of them. They're going to they gonna, they gonna get in there somehow. And I'm grateful for those of you who stream and those of you who came to church. I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful. So grateful, so thankful. All right, now, if you are not born again, I ain't going through all that. Listen to me. If you're not born again and you want to get saved, repeat after me. Lord, I am not saved. Save me. I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I receive salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. It's always been that simple. If you just got saved, text the keyword, I'm saved, to 51555. Provide your name and your email address, and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift. Now, if you want to join the e-church, go ahead and put the information up on that stream so they can, if they want to join it, you'd be, you'd be so shocked. The number of people that are joining the e-church and people that's getting saved on a weekly basis, yeah, I ain't never seen nothing like it before in my life. Now, if you're here in the dome and you, you believe God called you to join this church today he, and you want to become a member of this church or you want to get saved while you're here, get your Bibles, person belonging, come on down here, man. We want to receive you right now. I, I want the opportunity to pastor you. I don't know how other pastors feel, but I want to pastor you. I ain't tired of you, and you, you ain't going to run me away, and I ain't going to run you away. Well, you ain't going to run me away. Uh, <laughs> but if that's you, come on down here, connect with us. <clears throat> come on down and connect with us. Welcome you. The world changes church international.
young man with the umbrella in your hands, the Holy Spirit spoke to me when you walked down that aisle. He said, I put, I put an assignment in your heart and in your life, and Satan's tried to box it up, box it in, and lock it away from you. But the Spirit of the Lord would have you to know that there is no lock that will ever be able to be put on that assignment that'll stop it from coming to pass. And for you to revisit in prayer all that God has spoken to you, and he's going to begin to direct you down a couple of new paths. So begin to praise him that he is not a God who's forgotten what he has spoken in times past. For what he said to you, it will surely come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I'm so glad to be alive. I'm so glad to get to be the pastor of this church. I'm so glad that God and his power and his anointing it will be upon many of you. It'll be upon many of you. It'll be upon many of you. Some of you who are having children, your children will be born into a move of God. This is not the worst of times. For when God finishes, it will be the best of times. We all have to mature. We all have to grow. So we've all seen a lot of stuff. And we wonder why did this have to happen to me? And to fully prepare you for what you're about to walk into. It's going to be so good. And you're going to be so thankful and so grateful. You're going to be so thankful and so grateful that you won't ever, you just, just can't find a way to stop praising him. Because you think, Lord, me? Out of everybody else, you, you, you love me, you, you chose me, you didn't forget me. God said, no, I ain't forget you. I ain't never gonna forgive you. And I'll do things secretly and quietly and I'll have to remind some of you that it's done because you've finally forgotten about all your troubles. And while you moved away from it, I was able to move some things into your life. All is well. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room. They're going to take you in. <laughs> They'll be standing, knows if you're at home for a final blessing. to the God of grace and all power, to the God of anointing and favor, and to the God of protection, we come before thee. May this God of love and power be extravagantly upon you. 
May you come to know him as you've not known him before. May doors that were shut open and may doors that have been closed under you, they will open up. May the angels of God who have already been assigned to you minister to you in great, wonderful ways. May all of the peace that passes your understanding and the grace of God minister to you this day. Therefore, I release the blessing of his peace upon you. I release the blessing of his anointing upon you and the blessing of his grace to be upon you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forever. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you, everybody.